Welcome to the class. In this class, we will study how financial market works. In particular, we will study two aspects of financial market: price and trading. Price. Price. Why we care about price? At the end of the day, when we say investment. We want to make profit. What is simply way to make profit? The easiest way to do is to buy low and sell high. But what do you mean by low, and what do you mean by high? Then we must understand how price is being formed. And once we know high price being formed, and we can know how to do prediction. Price in financial market is much more complicated. It's also different from daily price. Look at the supermarket. Price seldom changes. Apple today is usually similar to the price of tomorrow. In the morning, will not be too different from tonight. However, stock market is very different. Price often changes. Stock of today is different from tomorrow. The price one hour ago can be different from price one hour later. So understand how price change over time is very important. And studying financial assets pricing is so important and so well studied in the academic literature. Is given the name called assets pricing. Fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is the oldest, most traditional way to do financial analysis. It is based on the fundamental of the underlying financial assets. Warren Buffett, one of the most richest. Person in the world is believed to employ fundamental analysis in his investment, and when apply the fundamental analysis to stocks, what he said the fundamental is probability of the company. The underlying idea is that the fundamentals of the company determine how much profit the company can make. Which in turn determine how much dividend the company can give to the stock owner, and at the end, it determine the price. Why? Because when the financial market is efficient in the long run, okay, fundamental should be reflected in the price because people care about dividend. And there are many ways to do fundamental analysis. One way is to what we call dividend discount model. Dividend discount model said price of the stock should be equal to the value of the dividend it generate in the futures. And because dividend generate today and tomorrow and it after tomorrow and so on and so forth, but dividend today is different than different next year, so you have to do some discounting. And some of all discounted cash flow or dividend is the value of the stock, which will be the price. And second way to do is to do ratio analysis. It attack it goes to the study the fundamental of the company. And how do we do ratio analysis? Is to look at the financial and accounting data. And usually the financial report is very complicated. So usually we try to look at the financial statement by calculating certain ratios. For example, we look at performance ratios, look at how well the company is doing, look at the liquidity, how liquid the company, how they, how the company is able to pay its own debt, activity, how well is management is sales, management inventory, financing, how leverage is the company, how the debt ratio and the liquidity ratio of the Company.
The second method of asset pricing we're going to study is technical analysis. It's also as old as fundamental analysis. However, this methodology doesn't depend on looking at the fundamental. Instead, we are looking at the price history. The idea is how the pa past price movement will tell us how the future price move. In fact, this is a short run oriented trading strategy. Why? Because we believe fundamental in the short run doesn't change. So the short run movement of the price can tell us about the future price movement. Some of you who know efficient market hypothesis would puzzle why technical analysis would work. Efficient market hypothesis said uh, you cannot use uh, past price to predict the future price. Why? If there is such a formula and everyone can use it and the market will adjust immediately. Even some of the people who know it can will ex exploit it to the extent that there no way the mispricing can occur. So they would say technical analysis cannot make any profit. True, market is pretty efficient, but not fully efficient. And there is some loophole that we can use technical analysis to make profit. Indeed, recent study shows financial market take at least around 15 minutes to incorporate news in the market. So during the meantime, if you're smart enough, you can make profit. So one can imagine that technical analysis is trying to understand uh, price, how it changed from one equilibrium to the other by looking at the past price history. And in a short period of time, technical analysis can be useful. And there are many of ways to do technical analysis. One way to do it is by calculating technical indicators. Why? Technical indicators are standard and easy to do compared to other ways like charting, other ways of waveform or theory. And we will cover three different ways of technical indicators. One, trend indicator, trying to identify the long run movement of the stock price. Second one is momentum indicator, who we'll try to look at short run movement of the stocks. Third, volatility is trying to look at the fluctuation, trying to look at what stock price can move within the range, and if it runs outside the ranges, we know what to do. The next method we're going to cover is called factor model. The previous two model does not firmly ground in empirical or data analysis. And factor model is an empirical study or data study of stock market performance. So the idea of factor model is that there is a common factor, one or two or three or more, that would affect different stocks. And by looking at these factors, we know how each stock performs. The most famous example is what we call capital assets pricing model, CAPM, which basically said with return trade-off. So it said if you want high expected return, you need to incur higher risk. It is also saying that if you want to earn more, you need to prepare to lose more. And the factor in the cap and model sets is if you want to have higher return, the factor determined the stock is the market return. And this model is discovered in the 70s. And only 20 years later, Pharma French have a free factor model that try to take into account of other factors, such as size of the company and also how the company stock is being valued by the public, whether it's overvalued, undervalued. And after three factor model, recent 10 to 5 years, there are more factors. So we'll cover those. The last method 
we cover for SS pricing is event study. It is a method to study the impact of event on stock market, such as earning announcement, interest rate announcement, product announcement, or natural disaster like earthquakes, air crash, and those things how they impact the stock market or the stocks related. Why is it interesting? Because those events can be recurrent and when they repeat itself in a similar manner can help us to understand how the price moving and then we learn how to predict the future when a similar event happen. One can consider this as a special type of technical indicator. Now we are done with the first asset pricing, we will go to trading. Trading, why we care about the trading process in the financial market is because we have said price change over time in the stock market and how the price changes over time is very important to understand how the demand and supply condition change in the stock market. By understanding how the demand supply change in the stock market, it tells us how the market underlying changes and help us to predict the price in the future. So understanding the trading process is so important and in the literature or in academia, we call this field of study called market microstructure. And this field is becoming more and more popular because the popularity of high frequency data or ultra high frequency data that allow us to understand how actually the trading process occur in the real world. For trading, the first thing we understand is liquidity. Liquidity means how fast is to buy or sell at a good price. And this is a particular aspect of financial market. And financial market compared to other market is a liquid, which is different from a lot of different market like housing. If you want to buy or sell a house or apartment at a good price, it usually takes several weeks or even several months to do it. But financial market is fast in the sense that if you want to sell a stock, it's rather quick. Maybe just take a several minute or a second or at most an hour to sell a good price. And what represent liquidity in the market is notice that uh, there are two different prices when you try to buy or sell. It's easy to see when you go to the airport, the money changer, if you want to change currency from one another, you often see it's not one single price, but two different prices. One for buying, one for selling. Why? This is due to the market friction. And because you want to buy and sell immediately where well, water liquid, the difference is the cost of liquidity. And in the literature, people refer it to bid ask spread. Why? Because the buying price is usually they call ask price and selling price called bid price. So that's why the price difference is bid ask spread. It is measure of trade friction. We learn a particular model role model to understand how bid ask spread is can be estimated from a transition price data. We learn other model called current model to estimate bid ask spread from high and low daily prices. The next thing we want to study is inventory model. Here we want to understand what the reason behind or the source of bid ask spread or trading friction. An inventory model provides us a transaction cost based explanation for it. Imagine a money changer. In order for him to function as a money changer, he must have different currency at hand to do business. Suppose you want to exchange from US dollar to Euro. He must have both currency to serve as money changer. He must have enough US dollar and enough euro to do the business. However, 
he fails to fulfill the role of money changer if demand and supply are not equal for extended period of time. For example, if a lot of people demand a buying US dollar from Euro, then he will get more Euro have has less and less US dollar. Once he runs out of US dollar, he cannot do business anymore. So inventory model trying to say the money changer which try to set the breed spread, try to make the buying price is different from selling price, make it higher, uh, make the buying price higher than the selling price in order to reduce the chance of failure. The next model we are going to cover is called sequential trade model. Instead of transactional cost-based approach, it's an information-based approach to explain breed spread. The idea behind is there's some smart trader who know more, but the money trader has no idea who is smart. And in order to avoid being exploited by smart trader, the bid ask spread is to make sure that uh, information asymmetry problem has been reduced. The idea is by setting the buying price higher than the selling price, can make profit from trading with regular traders because they buy a higher price and sell a lower price. Then there's some profit margin gain from those people. But for sure, trading with the smart trader, you're always making losses because they know better than you do. So the bid ask spread size is representing how information asymmetry in the market. The last topic we do cover in our class is behavior model. It is fairly recent models. And it tried to explain two interesting facts we found on the data. The first one is long run reversal. It says if a stock have been doing bad in the past, it will do well in the next year. And the other phenomenon is sort of momentum what is that if the stock has been doing well recently, usually tend to do well in the next year. And there are various ways to try to explain each of them separately, but it's very difficult to explain them together under the classical rational framework. So recent 20 years, people have been trying to use other behavioral models to explain those. In particular, uh, one of the classical models in the behavioral literature is trying to use psychological biases. First one is to use overconfidence, where people tend to believe themselves more than they should, and because of confidence will correct itself in the long run, that's why we observe long run reversal. And second one, is self attribution which trying to mean that when we observe short term bias we try to extend those biases that means we will have a long run momentum so that's the end of the overview of our class do you have any question before we formally start our class